Hi there. Welcome to Bourbon Turntable. We are the show that blends the love of music with the love of whiskey. And tonight with me, as always, is my good friend, Drew Crawley. Drew, good evening. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm I'm excellent. I mean, I'm sitting here with uh, three of my favorite people on the planet, and we're going to talk about new whiskey. We're going to talk about new music. I, I don't know that I could be much better. So, Absolutely. Agreed. How about yourself? Yeah, doing good. I'm drinking out of my very last bourbon fellowship, Glenn Cairn. Uh, I have <laughs> lost or broken the rest of them, so I think it's time for a re-up. I'm just going to put time, that out in the universe. Time for a new order, yes. I new think merch. <laughs> Yes, new bourbon club merch. I think we need to do that. Uh, we need some bourbon turntable merch too. Well, yeah. say, like maybe a little BT, a little yeah. BT merch. I, I think we could probably arrange that. And uh, Patrick sounds like our first customer. Patrick, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing this evening? And thank you very much for having us on the show. Thank you for being here. Talking new whiskeys. I got my hands full already. I'm excited. <laughs> Double fisted. All right, here we go. This is going to be dangerous. <laughs> Last time you were on, you were drinking uh, hazmat apple brandy. So, uh, oh yeah, that's let's see true. how this goes. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hi. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm doing just fine. Glad to be here with you guys. Well, thank you for joining us again. And uh, you you guys are. Uh, Wonderful friends and a wonderful part of the Barkhart Co-op, just as our show is, as well as Distillers Talk with uh, Christy Atkinson and the Alan Bishop. So be sure to tune into all these shows, follow everybody on social media, on Instagram and Facebook and all that great, uh, great, great stuff. Uh, all really good shows. Um, Pat, Mike, your show airs on Monday nights, nine o'clock Eastern time. Always have some wonderful guests. Anything coming up uh, soon that you want to make everybody aware of? Mm, well, tomorrow, well, actually, one of the, the things that's new to me, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to be uh, doing a big review of tomorrow. It's uh, uh, a little Old 55 Sweet Corn oh, is new to fun. me. So I figure I'll, I'll break that one out, do yeah. a little pre-review. A little spoiler. Yeah. So good for you if you watch both shows, but if you don't, you know you are going to get a taste at least tonight. Yeah, that's that's some uh, that's the nectar of the gods kind of whiskey right there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. All right. Hey, so before we get into the heart of the show, uh, Mike has a very special announcement to share with us. So we'll turn the floor over to Mike. All right. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification to find out when new episodes are coming out, which is every Wednesday morning on YouTube, Google, Apple, Spotify, all of your streaming services, Bourbon Turntable, every Wednesday. Excellent. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, Mike, for that great report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. No. <laughs> that, that was the last show. <laughs> Yeah. As long as you don't end the uh, the the yeah. phrase, like <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't do that on your show. <laughs> yes. Apologies to San Diego. Yeah. If if I can come on your show, I will gladly do it for your show. <laughs> Deal. Mike, Mike and I have discussed this. That's fine. We'll let you do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So tonight we're going to be doing one of the things that, that we have a lot of fun with and we try to do from time to time uh, just because there is new whiskey out there. There is new music out there. And part of what we want our show to be about is bringing that to, to our audience and uh, putting that out there for people to hear about some of the things that we're enjoying, both on the whiskey side and the music side. So uh, we're going to start out uh, side A of the show, as we always do on whiskey. And so the uh, first, uh, well, we'll just start with Patrick. Patrick, tell us, uh, uh, you, you've already given us a little bit of a hint as to what you've got there. So show us what, you, what you're what you drinking. Yeah, I am drinking, and I might as well pour some because it's not fair if I don't pour some, um, is Jason Fruits Old 55, 100% sweet corn with bourbon whiskey. Mm -hmm. Um this is the 40% version. Uh, actually donated to the show by the Ewalds, who found it at a 
tremendous price at uh, mm-hmm. Woodman's. If you're ever in Wisconsin, check out Woodman's Liquor. Sometimes I don't know what they're clearing out, and it is <laughs> awesome. It's awesome when it happens. <laughs> um, but uh, Jason Fruits uh, is in uh, Indiana, and I was going to say doing all just 100% sweet corn, which is really expensive. It's a pain to actually distill from what I understand. Um, there's, it's, it causes a lot of issues, but it's also very expensive. Um, and Jason, they usually use a very tight heart cuts compared to a lot of other people. So when you're already using something that's expensive to kind of cut down and then you're also taking like a tight window compared to what a lot of other people would take, especially with how much it costs. Um, yeah, it, le- it leaves you with usually a pretty uh, hefty price on the bottle, but never an issue selling it out. Um, okay. this, this is one of the things that it, a little quiet thing in the bourbon and whiskey industry, but when it hits, there is a big line and it does disappear. It's one mm-hmm. of those ones that I feel good about. Like if you are gonna, you know, waste your fr- Friday or Saturday or part of your week and going to get an allocated bottle um, or a release basically at this point, this is something you should be going to get. Um, and it shows. So, so you, you've tried it now. I, I have had, I have had a little sip. I'm, I'm pouring back at it again. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on. I'll just jump into it. Because for me, it was the viscosity and, wow, <laughs> it's just neat because you really get like that first bite of biting into like sweet buttered sweet corn and like right when you like bite into it and like kind of pull away, you get that on like the bottom side of this. Um, but yeah, this is just, it is, it's like, it is, it's just like biting into a buttered sweet corn. A little bit of, a little bit of spices on the back end, like a pepper and white pepper. Nothing over the top. We're not going to like a Mexican covered corn with all, everything on it or anything like that. But mm-hmm. Mike, Drew, have you guys had this before? I have. I have. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's got a very really nice good. light honey caramel on the front end. Sorry, I will let you guys talk. But I mean, no. it's very light, yet at the same time. Very light and inviting to people who haven't had whiskey, but if you have, if you slow down, it's complex enough for you to really spend some time with it. You know, like the finish is light, but it is sticking around, kind of like light medium at least. Mm-hmm. But you still are feeling like flavors kind of fade away as you're talking, and as time goes away. So it is, it's pretty interesting, even though it's a little bit. It's what you expect. It's not over. If it was like a super sweet corn punch, it would almost kind of make you be suspect, you know, like, <laughs> like if, if you weren't getting enough of like a little bit of barrel note on the back end, it's like, what, what happened here? This is, this is really like sweet corn. Um, but it, it's got just the right, right amount of flavors. Mm-hmm. The viscosity is the most interesting part for me though. I think on this one. Yep. Drew, Mike, any thoughts? You know, it, it's been too long since I've had it to be able to give tasty notes. I just remember really enjoying it. I always like to see some of these single grain uh, distillates uh, and kind of see what they do with them. It's just different than your normal, you know, standard Kentucky straight bourbon mash bill kind of a thing. So it's always nice to do. I also like to do stuff like that right in the middle of a tasting of some other things uh, that are more traditional and just kind of pull yourself out of it and force your tongue to work a little bit better. Uh, you know, kind of really think about what you're tasting. So I don't have anything to contribute on that one specifically, but yeah. I, I remember enjoying it quite a bit. Kettle corn. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's, is what I'm it's worth it's searching corn. for. If you get a chance, it's worth searching for, mm-hmm. try it somewhere. It's expensive, but that's because sweet corn is expensive. <laughs> sweet corn <laughs> is like a hundred times more than other corn. And Jason had said, it's a pain to make. It's a pain to do to, to everything about the whole process about it. Right. Acquiring, make sure you have enough, enough grain in the first place. But he's and always sold out of every grain. single bottle every single time. So that's why he's made it. And I think he has more now than he's had in the past. Um, but 
it's uh and there's a cast strength version also and the cast strength version is mm -hmm. it's pretty darn good mm -hmm. it is priced accordingly because you just there's no way there's no way that you're going to get a cheap sweet yeah. corn whiskey yeah i've i've, I've had uh, I, I had the opportunity to do a, a barrel pick at uh, old 55 mm -hmm. and jason let us try uh, some of the sweet corn 100 percent sweet corn straight from the barrel so that was pretty cool, and I do have a bottle of it, uh, the barrel strength, and it's you know uh, it's nectar of the gods kind of stuff. Uh, I was going to say if you took this up a couple <clears throat> levels, um, it's it's with the many flavors. Levels. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, and and uh, Pat, I think you're right. The 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 viscosity, the mouthfeel on it is it's very very unique. So that's a good choice. Yeah. So yeah. So it. It's not necessarily easy to find, uh, but uh, you know, no. you you if you have the opportunity, you need to to, to seek it out. Uh, follow uh, Old Fifty Five on social media, and um, Jason will tell you when he's doing his releases of this mm -hmm. stuff, um, and that way you, you just you just won't miss out. So, um, I'm trying to see is. I think they do some stuff on Sealbox. I'm not sure if that makes They do, sense. but Sealbox has not had their stuff forever. <clears throat> yeah. It looks like they're sold out of about everything with theirs. Yeah. Anyway. That's bet. Best bet is to, to, to go to Indiana or, or find a mule. Go to Indianapolis. It's a short trip and just yeah. take a little jaunt uh, out there. The, the, <laughs> yeah. The, the 80 proof, uh, you can find, uh, I know we can find in some stores in this area from time to time. So mm -hmm. anyway, it, it, it's worth your time to, to seek it out. So Mike, what do you have? Yeah. I've got one of them. It's, it's, this has been fairly new to me. I've had stuff from this distillery before, but this one bottle, I got it a couple of weeks ago and it is, uh, it might be something Kevin's going to bring up too. the, uh, Brooklyn American single malt. Darn and, you. <laughs> man, this is, it is, uh, it's like having warm caramel poured in your mouth. <laughs> it is <laughs> right here. <laughs> it, it is, so, it is so good. It is, it yeah. is worth at aforementioned seal box. That's where I got it. Um, it is, uh, yeah, 130 proof and 100% two row barley. Um, in a word, damn. It's it's just really really good whiskey. Mm. Uh, when I tried it the first time, uh, I referred to it as a knee buckler because it's just mm. kind of like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is knee knee buckling is like a whiskey of the year category for me. Like you know, I'm just saying, like if you get no, shook, it, it, is it, this. Is it, this it's in the running, absolutely. It's okay. It's yeah. it's on the board. I just want. Yeah. I mean, I just don't want to yeah. see some disgrace happen where you get knee buckled and the thing makes like a no. fifteen. I know. No. Nope. Like nope. some some weird judge, like uh, <clears throat> Olympic judging. I don't want that to happen. No, no East Germans <laughs> for this one. But but this is yeah. Seek seek this one out. I last I looked, I think it's on sale at Sealbox. Sale. Don't tell anybody <laughs> till I've ordered. Yeah. It, yeah. This won't come out for another. It, it's it's seventy nine dollars on, oh, on the watch right now uh, for for a finished whiskey yeah. now not bad for no. for a hundred and thirty proof bottle of whiskey you know if you want to go and say proof proof per dollar uh, it is uh, it is every bit worth the seventy nine dollars uh, it's <laughs> I think it's worth more than that it's it's just a very good solid American single malt whiskey it's mm. super good. All right, I agree a hundred percent. And um, Drew, have you had that one yet? Uh, I have not tried that one. I don't okay. believe. Uh, I know it was on the table at one of our events, but you know how stupid those tables get. You can't get to everything and also drive home. So that, that is that is <laughs> true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Pat, have you tried it? I have not had that one yet, oh, brother. I've heard, I've heard other people already say like good things about it. And I, I did stumble across a gift certificate to Sealbox I had that I have to I have to use up. So 
this may be what it happens. I so, you so you you get if you do sub, uh, subscribe to them, you you get tempting emails about once or twice a week where you know, mm-hmm. it says, "Hi, we're sending out this extra special, unique whiskey." You know, mm-hmm. Sometimes they're, uh, in my mind, outside of the affordable normal level, but it's also why it's kind of on on the side. That's kind of like a specialty whiskey. Like I don't know exactly. Was, you know, so it's not your average one, but if you are looking for uh, something unique, that's a good email to be a part of sometimes. Uh, yeah. You yeah. don't have yeah. to buy everything. No, I'll, I, every now and then I'll just go on the Sealbox website and just scroll through everything just to see, okay, is there something there that I've missed? Uh, is there something that, that I've had my eye on for a while and just need that reminder? Or is there like a new distillery that I haven't seen on exactly. there that seems to be like, well, we'll <clears throat> You know exactly who is this? and every now and then they do do uh sample packs of stuff or some of the distilleries do mm-hmm. which some, i also yeah. think is a great way to get people a chance to taste a lot of things um i know yep. it's a pain in the ass so the people that do do it give them credit because yep. no one really mm-hmm. likes filling those little bottles and sending them out to the way they do for that but um i appreciate it when it happens i mean it's it gives you a you know, for me, it's like you're going to get one for everybody and you're going to make a decent night of it. So yeah. hopefully you, you hopefully you bought a bottle or two in the end anyways by the amount yeah. of, of the packs you get. But it's uh, it's just fun, you know, and then you're not too mm-hmm. invested in something if it goes bad. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, visit Sealbox. Uh, Blake and Blake and his team do a really great job. Uh, there, they just celebrated their four year anniversary, I think, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, well worth your time, uh, to give them a look, and you'll find some interesting stuff on there, like this, uh, Brooklyn, uh, American single malt. So, Drew, what do you have? Yeah, well, first, I just want to say that I got to have one of my favorite experiences ever, uh, this week, which is to come home from work and see a package that said to Drew from Mike Lezak. <laughs> sitting on the front step. So I am trying, uh, you, know, you can't see it, but it's a Driftless Glen uh, single barrel bourbon. Uh, this one, all I know about it is that it's 120 proof. So uh, I'll have Mike fill you in on the stats, but uh, really interesting distillery out of Wisconsin. Um, kind of doing, doing the most that they can to do a true grain to glass kind of a thing, you know, local grains and water and all that good stuff. So mm-hmm. always cool to see that. The nose on it, is got like this weird combination of like Twizzlers and cinnamon. Um, I know Ooh, it's, yeah. it's uh, I know we're, some people are not fans of the anise note. Uh, I like it. So that, that, that reached out to me. And then, that I respect <laughs> that. The, the palette um, has this really nice um, kind of a, you know, those puff and frosted barley cereals. Um, yep. uh, your dragon puffs is what we had growing up is what they were called. You got reminds me of that, and then there's like a cool herbal, almost like basil note on the back end. So, really, really like it. Um, super interesting, kind of how it evolves. And uh, yeah, thank you, Mike, for for the the gift. Better than any Valentine's present or anything else that ever shows up on my doorstep. So, <laughs> feel feel the love, my friend. Hey, you're welcome. I, I I was hoping it would be something. Well, I knew it was something you probably never had. At least in this as a single barrel pick of Driftless mm-hmm. Glen. And Driftless Glen makes really good whiskey. We've had a lot of their rise. Wisconsin, Wisconsin rye, especially young Wisconsin rye, is right on the mm-hmm. money. But this is uh like a five, five or six year old bourbon. Um Driftless Glen has some of the coolest squared up bottles, yep. but yes. they've got fingerprints on the side. The owners. From yeah, yeah from the owner. But it's surprising to grab them right there. It's just it's they, they they feel like decanters, <laughs> and uh, but no, this is yeah, it's a uh, uh, yeah, 120 proof um, right. single barrel, and it was a pick from combination from Keg and Bottle and the Mash and Journey Club mm, whiskey, awesome, or whiskey pickers, yeah. whatever. Yeah, you talk about that bottle. Put that up there again. I want to everybody will be able to see it. Um, the one of the owners is uh renee bemis and yep. renee is a sculptor by trade and she designed that bottle and yeah. the, the bottle itself is pretty darn expensive you can see the fingerprint there yeah. on the side and, and on the back well you can't see it on that one because it's got a big dumb sticker on it but 
Um, <laughs> you know, but, you can maybe <laughs> see through it. Yeah, it's you can see the, the windmill. It's design, the windmill on the yeah. back. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really well done. and It is a it, substantially hefty bottle. Yeah, it's weighted. Yeah, it's, yeah. it is. It makes I like it. to keep one on my nightstand for uh, drinking purposes and home protection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't really be argued for it. It's like, well, just in case. I need to have it. Um, yeah. But yeah, and that's right about like in Wisconsin, I say once you start getting to like a five, six years where you start to see it progress, like mm -hmm. you might have a bourbon that's okay or good beforehand, but once you get to five, six, you actually start to see it in my mind kind of make a turn towards, you know, getting a real flavor, getting a real substantial change mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Um, so a year or two later, but not too bad. But yeah, yeah and they were, like two or three years ago, they already had like five, uh, five or six thousand barrels already down. So, hmm. and they've been going since then. So, it's a nice, uh, nice little stop on a tour. If if anyone's yeah. ever coming to uh, yeah. Wisconsin, I, I'm I'm coming to Wisconsin uh, at some point, Pat. We just got to figure out the time, and and that's one of the I'm, spots I want to be be sure that we hit. Teasing. So I'm teasing. I'm, I'm taunting people. That's the way I, I do it. You're not taunting me. I'm going to be there, dude. Uh, <laughs> all right. So what I've got for you, hang on a second. Let me uh, get that there. Uh, since uh, oh, oh. Mike stole my thunder on the, the first one, I will share with you this Middle West Spirits uh, wheat five-year wheat whiskey finished in an Oloroso cask. And mm. uh, if you... If you've talked with me about whiskey before, you know that finished whiskey is something that I, I a lot of times find to be a gimmick. It, uh, I think, in a lot of cases, it's used to cover up bad whiskey, <laughs> and um, or hey, I can't think of anything else to do with this, so let's throw it in a sherry cask. But this is fantastic. It is uh, really well done. Uh, there are notes of of plum and dark chocolate and vanilla and cinnamon uh it's very uh layered in its flavors and it's excellent long finish uh middle west is i've not had anything of theirs that i've thought eh, that's just okay yeah it's all right like blends it's all right um <laughs> every, everything that these guys have done i think is, has been a home run and this yeah. is this is no exception in it it surprises me how much I like that. Hmm. Yeah. So um, we'll probably be hearing more about that uh, later on. But if, if you have an opportunity to, to get this, uh, highly recommend it. Mm. Highly re yeah. recommend it. Okay. All right. Um, I their stuff. I mean, I'm starting yeah. to get jealous. <laughs> No, I mean, seriously, you start hearing yep. bottle counts of people and it's all good. And you're like, son of a bitch. Yep. How do we find this? <laughs> well, sorry. It's a problem I, with I, different states. I, yeah. I already got a, I got a big enough package from you, Kevin, already. I was going to say. <laughs> That's what, what you said. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm back in a row. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap up side A of the show uh, and uh, we'll we'll get ready to talk about some new music talk about some new music but first of all we want to tell you about the Alan Bishop experience it's now out on YouTube it's been out there for a little while uh, I know Mike and uh, Pat uh, were involved in this they were uh, featured in this documentary on the uh, life and shenanigans of Alan Bishop, the uh, head distiller <laughs> at Spirits of French Lick, the uh, writer on uh, Alchemist Cabinet, uh, the host of uh, Distiller's Talk. So uh, check that out. Uh, Pat, Mike, Drew, I, you may have seen it already as well. Any any thoughts on the, the documentary? I think it went to an... Uh more of an introspective and reflective look at Alan Bishop rather than a documentary about distilling per se. It was about his practices, but it became more, mm -hmm. it became a little more, it became bigger. And mm -hmm. that's because, well, 
good luck with how much footage Bolt had to take with that. So I don't know how the hell they all narrowed that down. So good yeah. luck to them on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, sorry, I, I didn't I think you off. Sorry. But, uh, no, I, but as Bo had said, he was, uh, he had one idea <laughs> for this, for this thing to try to do his talk about his history and uh, his, his methodology and philosophies on doing this. But Alan, uh, as listeners and watchers of the bourbon turntable have experienced, Alan is not going to take himself seriously um, for very, for, for very many reasons. And although he is extremely, he is very intelligent. He does know what he's doing. Uh, not cocky about it and loves to make fun of himself more than anybody else. Yeah. Um, and, and likes for everyone to jump on the bandwagon for that. So it was, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. When it's we it's did, not a Michael Moore documentary. No. <laughs> when, when we did a live show on my birthday, <laughs> Alan, Alan was on and for, I don't know, probably the first 45 minutes was in character as his, Dusty Roads. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't really know what to do. And what, with and what that. do you do with that? You got. You, I'm glad you just went with it. You just kind of go and, and hope for the best. And, um, Start asking him personal questions about his life as Dusty Roads. Yeah, I, did, I didn't really want to go down that rabbit hole, but um, but Alan's been gracious enough to be on on the show a few times, and I know he's been on uh, my whiskey den as well. And uh, Alan is a good friend to us, and uh, uh, not I mean, yes, he's a fantastic distiller, but he's uh, very creative and innovative in, in everything that he does. Yep. But he also doesn't. He takes it seriously, but he doesn't take himself too seriously. And uh, I think that's yeah, something true. That, that shows the humility that he has. He has a lot of pride in his work and what he does, uh, but he also has a, a great level of humility about himself, too. So mm -hmm. check out yeah. this Alan Bishop experience. And when you go there on YouTube, there will also be a link to uh, donate to Mike Stallings. Mike is a, is a good friend of Alan's. Uh, good friend of whiskey drinkers really everywhere uh, Mike's dealing with some very serious health issues so there's a link at that uh, at the Alan Bishop experience where you can donate to Mike and and help him out with some medical bills so check that out too all right so we're going to talk about some new music we've talked about some new whiskey and so now we're going to talk about some new music Drew I'll start with you buddy What's sure. the first one you've got on your list? All right. So this is a guy that I came uh, to knowing about about a month and a half ago. Another Oklahoma boy. So he has that going for him. Uh, it's a guy named J.R. Carroll. Um, so he is uh, the touring pianist uh, and opening act for Zach Bryan, who I've talked about on the show mm -hmm. before, but I'm a big fan of. Uh, he's got some great stuff out. Uh, the, the standout song is uh, – Probably for me, one called Red Fern, um, but he's just put out uh, a new record called Raging in the Dark that is definitely worth a listen uh, for fans of Zach Bryan, John Prine, Tyler Childers, Jason Isbell, kind of all in that vein. Mm -hmm. Write some really, really good songs, um, and I'm, I'm a pretty big fan. So came uh, saw him at Bonnaroo uh, last month and really, really enjoyed it. Okay. You're, okay, your, your, your task now. Get him on the show. That might be able to be arranged. Yep. I think yeah. you can do it. We follow each other it. on Instagram. We can, there you we can go. Figure it out. It's done. Okay. Next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Next week, we've got something really cool for you. Spoiler. No spoiler yet, but you know, big teaser right there. Uh, you'll have to watch to the end of the show to find out what that's going to be. But that... That sounds cool because um, I know you're a big fan of uh, Zach Bryan and mm -hmm. Zach himself has a new album out that is uh, prolific. <laughs> I mean, there, yeah. there's a lot of music on that thing, um, and but it's but it's very very good. I've really enjoyed listening to that. So, um, and I may have just stolen one of your other ones there, but uh, we'll, we can come back. Okay. Uh, Mike, what do you have, sir? So yeah, new, fairly new to me. Uh, music is Emily Scott Robinson, who mm. she's a singer songwriter. She had her own, uh, did her own, um, uh, a couple albums, but then, uh, Oh boy records picked her up. Um, 
And I don't know if there was anything because she came on there after John had passed away. But listening to her her music, it's uh, the the um, the 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 album is the uh, American Siren album, and her her voice is it, it, she's got a very sweet voice. There's a lot of songs on there that one in particular that is uh, <laughs> it, it's it's extremely personal and very and kind of emotional to me. But it's a song called Old Gods. And it's actually a song about you know trying to find lost love, but the lyrics in there, there's mm-hmm. a reason that she's on John Prine's record label, mm-hmm. and she's got lyrics on there that uh, one of them is um, says, "Your blue eyes are there when I close mine. I see your sweet face when I dream. Um, my heart is all ragged in pieces, bleeding at every seam, and it just, it's just, it's just, it's gut wrenching. And uh, but she's really, really good. And listening to that song, it's it's I think that it was recorded um, live, like not in parts, like all in the same studio, but, but the harmonies in it are, are beautiful. And it's just a bass. It's a guy playing upright bass, but he's playing it like he's like, he's playing a fender bass. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it's, yeah, it's really, really worth, uh, worth checking out. Interesting. I, I, I've not heard this before, but I just pulled up uh, her website man it looks like just a throwback you know like yes big white country boots loretta (laughs) lynn kind of yep vibe to to what i'm seeing here so i'm gonna yeah i'll definitely check that out this week yeah that that sounds awesome all right patrick how about you sir what do you got um well it's i won't say a whole album i was gonna say a page and through i was doing listening to stuff and something that popped up that i liked uh it, it was a mix of old songs so i wouldn't know if i don't know it was it was uh hold on i forgot the actual name of it but it was by the the funk hunters um was the name of the band and hold on a second here it was shake the room because it does say it samples stuff from different uh from different songs they just did a really good job putting it together whenever when i was there it like struck a, it struck with me and i was like all right, I, I if I was out, I could totally get down to the song that that they cut up, and I'm not normally one for that. Um, preface: I did listen to some of their other stuff. I'm not a fan of everything that they make, so okay. um, it seemed like this song and maybe one or two others kind of kind of had a different tone than some of the other ones, or were, were done a little better. Um, but I was going to say I'm not I'm not crapping on anyone. The song I really enjoyed it, so. Um, what was yeah. the song that you really liked? It was "Shake the Room" by uh, by the Funk Hunters. Shake I like the, the name room. of the band too. Sorry, just <laughs> sure. All right, because because when I've, I've I pulled this up, let me hang on, hang on just one second. And, yeah, it looks like I would hate this. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, it does. I, see, it's one of those things. It's just one of those heard things. Any of it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like I said, you, some of the other songs not really my thing and whatnot. And I saw that I was not. I don't. I, what, yeah, didn't seem like I would go hang out with them. Not, not mm-hmm. nothing against anybody, but didn't seem like my uh, my flow, if, if you would. But not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was that song alone was something that kind of I was, you know, I thought they actually did a, a did, did a good job on that one. Right. It, it caught a good flow with uh, the past and uh, kept a good beat with it. I, I, okay. I dug it. I, I I was gonna play it in the background, but I don't want you to get in trouble with YouTube. So oh, I just decided. Thank, to, you. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll I'll be I'll listen to it. Okay. I, I, again. I, well, just remember it's that one. It's the, God these, damn it. These look like. <laughs> Just you know, uh, the the punk hunters, not the uh, yeah. Funk when, when when you hear it <laughs> and what they were using, I would have thought it was people from uh, an older era. And then you hear the other music, and it's like, oh, it's clearly from today. You know what I mean? No, yeah. I mean like the people mixing it. Like I thought this would have been from like the people from the seventies or eighties, just by the by the way they did it. And I was like, that's cool. And then I'm like, hear this is like, no, you. You clearly are from today, right? Okay, and so. it, and it, it's called uh, "Shake the Room." All right, "Shake the Room" by the Funk Hunters. <laughs> All right, so 
<clears throat> we'll see. But yeah, I'm just trying to be honest. It's no, the same I, thing as reviewing fine. reviewing whiskey. I, I mean, look, I'm like, look, hey, I like this release, you know. And that, that's fun. that's that's why we taste whiskey blind. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so that's right. And that's why we we do this is so that people can hear different uh, opinions and try some things that they may not otherwise try. So now I'm going to do some some low hang fruit here, and I won't get into a whole lot of detail on on the ones that I'm going to talk about. But the first is uh, uh, "Entering Heaven Alive" uh, by Jack White. It just came out as we're recording this. It came out uh, two days ago. Yeah. Uh, and Fear of the Dawn had, had come out a few months ago, and we did a, a whole show on it. Uh, we may or may not do a whole show on this particular album, but it's it's the polar opposite Jack White. You you, you mm -hmm. see the other side of Jack White, or, or one other side of Jack White. I, I really think that mm -hmm. he's one of the guys that <clears throat> if he told you, "Hey, I'm going to do a bluegrass album." Okay, sure you are. Yeah, uh, I'm going to do a. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do an album with uh, the the Funk Hunters. Okay, yeah, you're right. I can see that too. Um, <laughs> I'm going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, Fear of the Dawn was so very uh, electric. And hmm. this is so much more mellow, I guess, mm -hmm. for lack of a better way to put it. And uh, uh, the songwriting is is exceptional. Uh, there are uh, several uh, very interesting songs on it. He does a, a different take on Taking Me Back, and I don't care for that. Um, but I think everything else on there is really good. And I, Drew, I know you've listened to it. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I, I actually really liked it. I find myself oftentimes just because work is incredibly stressful and I've had a lot going on wanting some of that more mellow kind of sound. So I definitely enjoyed this one, I think, even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, the, all Along the Way was kind of my favorite um, so mm -hmm. far. I think that's the third or fourth track on the record. But um yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like you with Jack White. It's like you could put out just about anything and I'll at least give it a listen and probably find two or three things that are worth throwing on the playlist. So I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. No, I yeah. think it's I think it's good stuff. Mike, have you listened to it yet? I, I have. Jack was nice enough to release it on my birthday as a gift to me. So um, <laughs> so I, I, I listened to it. I listened to it a couple times uh, Friday. Um, it's uh, I'm, I'm going to see him next month. So it's, it's got me kind of excited to, for that concert. Cause I yeah. saw, I saw him, uh, when, uh, now I don't know why that's why it's escaping me, but the, um, uh, oh, the album he released in 2018, it was his, his, and it was, it, it wasn't great. Boarding house. Um, board, yes. And, um, he, uh, but live the songs that he played on that live, mm -hmm. they worked really well. And it was really good, yeah. but he played all of his stuff. I mean, as he does, he plays White Stripes, Raconteurs, Dead Weather, all right. that in his concert. And the way he mixed in some of the songs, just ran right into another song. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm pretty excited to see how these how he's going to do the show because he's going to have to play some of the old stuff. And is he how how will he do it? Like interspersing these songs mm -hmm. into the other. Stuff. Right. I'm sure be very creative. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know that that album Boarding House Reach. First time I heard it, I didn't really care for it, and then I heard him perform some of it live, and I went back to it. And I'm like, okay, I, I get it now. I I, mm -hmm. I I really enjoy this, and I've you know probably listened to it several different times now. But yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Uh, Drew, what do you have next on your list? Cool. Yeah, so this will be my last one for the evening. Came across this guy. He was the first opener for Willie Nelson when I saw him three, four weeks ago. A guy named Drayton Farley. Uh, he's from uh, just north of Muscle Shoals, Alabama, I believe. And was, you know, you're at a Willie Nelson concert and all the things that go along with Willie Nelson are there. 
even though I was not partaking, you cannot help but get that. And this guy <laughs> steps onto the stage and immediately grabs my attention. Um, just a brilliant songwriter, uh, very tongue in cheek. I don't want to say he's like the next incarnation of John Prine or anything like that, but he has a song on his newest record. It's called a hard up life. Um, it's called American dream. And, um, Mike, you're, I know a big John Prine fan, the song, your flag decal won't get you into heaven. Uh, <laughs> that song immediately came to mind listening to Drayton Farley sing American dream. So, um, really, really cool. You know, kind of the, I can make fun of this thing cause I love it. Uh, you know, he's got a, a great song about his wife on that record. That's just kind of like in spite of ourselves. And he just very much in that vein. So if you like the country music side of things and the singer songwriter things, I uh, would really recommend checking him out. I think you'll enjoy it. Hmm. Very cool. Sounds good. Yeah. I'll look forward to trying that. Um, Mike, what do you have, buddy? What else do you have? Uh, I got I got a couple more new ones, but I'll, I'll I don't know if you're gonna you know, go around again or you want me to just name a couple of them off or no, you, yeah, um, whatever you want to yeah. do. We're good. Right along, so, baby. So, <laughs> okay, funk, funkadelic. Uh, <laughs> hey, I would go see George Clinton. I Same. I saw George Clinton, and you it, son and of a bitch. <laughs> it was uh, that's for an, that's a discussion for another show. But it was totally it was it was great. Um, a couple <laughs> weeks ago, got to see uh, uh, Brandy Carlisle came through, and mm, yeah. I really lo- I love Brandy Carlisle. She had two openers. Um, one of them, I'd heard her, but I didn't really pay much attention to her. But after watching her live, I went back and started listening a bunch of her stuff. Katie Pruitt. Oh, she, yeah. She, She's awesome. Oh, dear God. She was. So good. <laughs> oh, man. And then she came out and she sang songs with Brandy at the end. And, you know, as strong as Brandy's voice is, she, it, it, it was it was awesome. Her other opener was Tanya Tucker. <laughs> and. <laughs> And Tanya came out, and I say I, all my images of Tanya Tucker in my mind are are on all the tabloids with her and Glenn Campbell. You know, when I was young, yep. and Tanya had a certain look about her. She's you know she's she's lived a life, folks. But you know, but she <laughs> <laughs> she got up, she talked, she talked a lot about her tequila brand. She sang two songs, and then talked and talked and talked and said, "Hey, my time's limited. What song do you guys want to hear?" And like all the women, like Delta Dawn, and she sang Delta Dawn. And she she did herself justice on that. That was good. But but Katie Pruitt was yeah surprise breakout on that. Um, but another one recently, Lyle Lovett came out with his first album in a dozen years, yes. and it it is like it's like putting on an, an old pair of shoes, man. Everything it's it's a it's called Twelfth of June. He's got you know funny songs like Pants is Overrated. Yes, but him and Francine doing their vocals back and forth, it just. It, it, it was so good to listen to that. And one of my friends just saw him a couple nights ago in Des Moines and he said, of course it was a great show. You know, it's like him and the band doing their business. Uh, that was a great show. Um, um, yeah. I will listen to that album just a couple of times this week and it, it's all over the place. I mean, yes. you've got, you've got <laughs> jazz songs and, old school country songs and folk songs and it's everywhere but that song uh 12th of june man mm-hmm. that's that's got song of the year stuff written all over it it's really really good yeah yeah it's uh it's it's wor- i mean law love it's just he he is kind of all over the board but at the same time it kind of it fits him i mean what with, with the songs but yeah to have <laughs> yep. Country, big yep. band, jazz, instrumental, and everything. But um, he's he's yeah. he sounds great. He sounds great. And Francine, my God, that woman, she's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before before we we move on from Mike, uh, I do want to bring up that that's the Emily yeah. Scott Robinson. I mean, <laughs> gee whiz, that that could have been uh, yeah fifty years ago. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I'm I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, to, to listening to that so Same. yeah it's, it's, it's good interesting when people want to go with a timeless picture like that because that's a yeah. choice yeah you know like yeah. that that in itself is yeah. a neat statement 
It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, the only other one I have, which I know it'll it'll tread on yours, Kevin, is the the series of releases coming out from one of our favorite bands. Yep. And and as as we're recording this, the third one's coming out. Yep. And I am I am excited. It, it, yeah, I referred to uh, this Brooklyn American single malt as being a knee buckler. This is the musical equivalent of a knee buckler. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It's just so darn good. Yes, uh, it is. The that that first, if, if, if you don't know, uh, Tedeschi Trucks Band is doing. And I'm sorry, Mike. I'm walking all over your <laughs> your. Nope. Bar. Just go right on ahead. <laughs> but so what? I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. <Sorry. laughs> We're releasing four albums, uh, all under the theme of uh, "I Am the Moon." And uh, the four albums are all coming out over the course of the summer, and two of them are out. Uh, when you listen to this show, the third one will be out, and then the last one comes out in uh, August. And uh, so, Mike, is there a favorite wow. track that you have of anything yet? You know, um, I'm still, I, I've so I've listened to the first one, Crescent, I don't know, a hundred thousand times. Yep. Um, the, uh, I still have <laughs> Ascension. I've only, I've only given it, you know, maybe about five or 10 or 15 l- listens. <laughs> um, but the first one, the first one watching it, the, the visual, when they released it and they did their visual along mm-hmm. with it, it was like, it was like watching when they say telling, they're telling the story of a band traveling in the sixties, you know, and this is, it, it was kind of shot like that and just fun and funky, but the, out of, out of the two albums so far, both beautiful songs. The first album, it's just, um, well, as they're telling a story, was it a, per, a Persian love story, I think, across all four albums or right. something like that. Hmm. Uh, but there's a definite mood change. Like if you're hmm. changing to, you know, new scenery in a movie or new something going on, there's a there's a change in, in the two albums. But my favorite so far out of the both, the, both of them is inst- instrumental Pasaquan. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I I love cranking that in my car with the subwoofer. I love listening to it with my headphones on. I love listening through my phone speaker. Yes. That is, <laughs> it is free free floating, funky jazz, light as a feather, fast. It's that song is it's it's awesome, and, and it, yeah. it showcases the that band, which is a fantastic band, right. but. The yeah, the drumming, the keyboards, everything that's that's in there with that song. I mean, the only yeah. thing it doesn't have is it really doesn't showcase the horns. It doesn't doesn't showcase Susan. But that's for all those guys to go off and take a break while right. while they're yeah they're they're getting down with it. That song is they're they're all great. But so far, that's the song I've listened to more than any of them out of both yeah. of those albums. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. I, um, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of them, but no that that it's the whole thing's kind of next level but that is a little bit yeah. next level of next level so yeah how many songs everybody's are in each album five like or six, six. Yeah. <laughs> okay no it, it, i just it, meant it, like it's a legitimate question because if you're gonna release it over yeah. a year you're probably gonna tour with it as well too and i'm like how right. stacked yep. are you gonna plan on making right. that along with other stuff right. so that's all yeah so. right and and uh I mean, right now, you know, just watching them online, watching their, their social media, they'll post what the set lists are for each night. And oh, cool. uh, you'll have uh, a few songs off of both of the albums that are out, uh, as well as songs from prior albums. And they do a, a number of covers on their, oh, their yeah. concerts. Oh, there's a couple uh, I've heard that were tremendous. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But what I'm what I'm holding out for is I'm waiting for all four to get released, and I'm just hoping that okay they'll do a show where one set is just a standard Tedeschi Trucks Band show, and then another set is playing the whole four albums all the way through. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Oh, but, uh, you, you mean I'll, like I'll a, a Red Rocks experience? <laughs> just uh, saying. I mean. I, I mean, they they play Red Rocks. They played Red Rocks. Uh, they, I don't I'm know, just saying, a there's ago. a lot of yeah. places that do two night shows. That's one of them. Sure. Yeah. 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 And and and, and one for if, if you haven't done it, I haven't done the membership there, but I'm really dying to just because of this. 
uh, nugs.net and you can do the, do uh, pay, you can buy download concerts or you can do a membership or basically yep. you pay and you can watch all these one and they're, they're shot. Great. The sounds great. And they have a lot of Tedeschi trucks on there. Um, but the thing about these two albums, it's, you know, a lot of Tedeschi trucks, it's always you know, the same vocals, you know, for the most part. But and some people kind of stand out, you know, maybe Alicia jumps in a little bit on this one more, but they're really spreading the vocals out. I think I think it seems like the only one who's not singing is Derek, right. <laughs> but mm-hmm. but right. it's but it's so good. I mean, yeah. it yeah, oh. it, it, the it's it's just it's just really really good albums, and they're yeah. I like what they're doing. I like how they're like they 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 won't play anything that's out, upcoming until after that album's been out, yep. and then they just yeah. they're throwing that in there and they're keeping themselves on their toes when they're when they're playing and they're playing a lot yeah. of shows. Seems like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've always been a very ambitious band in terms of they'll have a a hundred different songs that could appear on a set list on any given night. So Mm -hmm. they've got to be ready. The band has to be ready. They have to be ready to to play whatever it is Derek puts on the set list for that night. Mm -hmm. And then, then you put, this project which is incredibly ambitious on top of it i i don't know that there's anybody out there that that i have more respect for than mm-hmm. than tedeschi trucks band but anyway yeah <clears throat> pat do you have anything else mm, i've only been working backwards right now i haven't heard enough new stuff um i've been listening to a lot of everlast mm-hmm. that i just I like what he, I like what he's talking about a lot of the time. Sorry, he always seems like he did, what he's talking about is what did I tell someone like uh, the America that a lot of people don't like to discuss, and not in a bad way. Just the part, everything else is so fancy and shiny and <clears throat> over the you know top right now, and I just like a little bit of uh, honest edge to some of it, yeah. um, in the discussion of things. Yeah, Drew, do so, you have anything else tonight? That'll be it for me. I'll just second Mike's Katie Pruitt recommendation. I, I saw her a couple of years ago. She was opening for Rustin Kelly on a, a tour and then her podcast, her music, everything. Yeah. She's, she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to check out that Emily Scott Robinson too. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That'll, that'll get played on the way to work in the morning. Um, a few that I wanted to throw out there. One is, um, Marcus King. Mm. Yeah. Okay. First of all, <laughs> bless his heart. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad he's extraordinarily talented. But uh, Marcus King has a new album coming out in August uh, called Young Blood. Uh, there are already, uh, I think, four tracks off of that mm-hmm. album that have been released. They're all fantastic. He's just, mm-hmm. he's yeah. he's exceptionally good. A uh, great songwriter, great guitarist, and and and, a, and, a, and an exceptional vocalist as well. And uh, so, I would highly recommend that. Uh, one of my favorite bands from the 1990s was a band called Kings X, uh, mm-hmm. power trio out of Tyler, Texas, and they've got a new album coming out in September called Three Sides of One. Uh, the first single off of that is out. It's called Let It Rain. It is, uh, it's really good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and the cult, if you were a fan of the cult back in the Mm -hmm. 80s, okay, yeah, I I played a lot of cult in the dorm room back in college, so that'll tell you how long they've been around. Uh, but they've got a new album coming out in August. The first single is, uh, this album's called Under the Midnight Sun, and the uh, uh, first singles out now called give me mercy and i try to do on fridays just a little four for friday thing i call it uh put together a little four track spotify list put it out on uh, facebook of just some new music that that i've been listening to uh so you can try to sample some of that as well there may be Those a few of the great. things yeah thank you we, uh, we there there may be a few of the things we've talked about tonight that make it on uh, next Friday's list. So uh, be sure to check these these things out. And uh, so hopefully 
uh, I know I have. Hopefully you have, uh, as a listener, uh, heard about some new music that you can uh, check out your own self. We will uh, put together a a playlist uh, inspired by this show. So we'll have a little bit of uh, everything uh, that we've talked about here tonight, uh, included in the playlist. So that'll be a good place for you to start. You hear something that you like, you can uh, dig into it a little deeper. So uh, anything else, guys? Anything else new? Uh, Uh, I'm I'm on my second new to me with me. Yeah. The, I'm sorry, the say Vancouver, it again. On my set, my set, new to me whiskey. Uh-huh. It's the uh, P- the Pacific Flyway from Golden Beaver. Oh, uh, I had I had some of their new make before, which uh, uh, and that I really really like. But wow, yeah, I get I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be reaching out to Chris here pretty soon to get him on my whiskey den. Mm. Yeah, he'll be. This he's is a great good whiskey. Great, he's awesome. He's a great <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. And, and I got a different one, a little stolen wolf. Yep. It's my second new to, new to me one. And we were looking to get him on because uh, Eric's got quite a story. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, yeah, he does. He seems like a pretty nice guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah. going to say, and, uh, one of those people that actually has like a, a direct connection to the past. Right. Um, where, where knowledge was like, yeah. directly handed off to you. Just uh, that type of stuff doesn't happen where it's hands on for, you know, months of tutelage and. Maybe right. years. So I, I don't know well enough. I could even say years might have been, but I mean, yeah. I know it was. Uh, anytime learning from someone who has all that extra knowledge from the past is great because there's there's little tricks, there's little tidbits that you know. That's the that's the stuff that makes it unique that gets passed down. Is like you think maybe cut it here, and it's like no, 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 let it go a little bit further. There's like. Mm-hmm. Just the, like mini trade secrets that that you might not know that he's like, oh no, you're letting that you're you're letting that go for way too long, you know, just yeah. just little little quiet things mm-hmm. and just I don't know. I'm a history buff, so anytime you get to hear something directly from someone who who aided it themselves and had that much influence is just fantastic. Just, yeah. I like reading books, but getting it firsthand is always is always better. <laughs> Um, sure. so we will, uh, well, one more new music, Drew Crowley. Oh. Stuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for always plugging it. So yeah, Stuck is out now wherever you stream music, uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all those kind of things. The first single off of an upcoming project. I would be honored if you would listen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so one other thing. Yeah, next, next week, week we have a treat. <laughs> so we have got uh, the drummer from the Black Crows and Trigger Hippie, uh, Mr. Steve Gorman, is going to be coming and gracing us with his presence. It is sure to be a fantastic show. Um, yeah, big fan of Steve and can't wait to have him on. Yeah, that's badass. So, Sorry, I, mean, I just got excited now. Ugh. <laughs> They're sticking yeah. I uh, don't know how much whiskey we'll be talking during those that show. We, uh, but uh, we'll we'll have some really great music conversation, I'm sure. And uh, Steve's a great uh, a great guy, a lot of fun. And uh, I, you know, I'm looking forward to to being able to talk with him here. So uh, look forward to that. So social media for Pat. Where can folks find you? Uh, you can find my whiskey then on Facebook and YouTube, mainly for shows. Uh, <laughs> there are posts and updates on Instagram. And every so often we do some on Twitter, but that is the forgotten social media platform for us. So, And if you're going to show up for Monday night shows, show up in the YouTube chat. That's where all the exciting chat happens. All the cool kids are hanging out there. That's right. All right. Mike, how about you, buddy? The Be- best place for me and anything social media or whatever is Monday night on uh, My Whiskey Den. Yep. 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern. Yep. Drew. Yep. So find me on this show every Wednesday morning, uh, but also on Twitter at Drew Crawley 63 and on Instagram at Drew dot Crawley 63. Yeah. Yeah. Bourbon Turntable, uh, as, as Mike told us at the top, at the top of the show, we're on YouTube and all of your favorite 
podcast platforms. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Uh, we're on Twitter as well. So we're everywhere. Uh, we've got great uh, shows coming up. Uh, I think today was a lot of fun uh, sharing with you some new whiskey and some new music. Hopefully you have uh, found at least one whiskey and or one uh, new uh, music uh, source that uh, you'll be able to tune into and have a good time with. So we're here to serve you. So. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Pat, Mike, thank you very much for being on. I, I really thank love you, you having guys. us. And uh, it's always a treat to hang out and uh, do shows with you. I appreciate the opportunity to, to be on with you guys on my whiskey den uh, as well. But uh, just it's good to, to call you friends. So Indeed. until Feel next same. time, thank you. Until next time, on behalf of Drew, Pat, and Mike, cheers, love, and free bird. Cheers. cheers. Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all. That's tasty. Mm-hmm.